Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Hardcore. Ain't this a joyous day? So I wanted to revisit an unfinished project in this episode as episode 75 really isn't too far away and if I want to update the world download for then, then I need to make sure that everything is up to code. And there is one project in particular which is so glaringly unfinished that I just have to make progress on it or I worry that people will be very confused. What unfinished project am I talking about? The underground villager area? The barter bartery? Something involving the Elder Guardians? Uh, whatever that's supposed to be? No, you silly. I'm talking about the smart mineshaft. So I've actually been doing some grinding between episodes to try and acquire as many logs as possible, because oh boy I sure do need a lot of them. I've got at least a shulker of birch, oak, dark oak, acacia, jungle and spruce, as well as a lot of hoppers and other redstone supplies, which will hopefully be more than enough for me to make some decent progress on the smart mineshaft itself. That grind did take quite the rare toll on my axes and hoe though, so let's just repair them up again with my villagers here. Which of course is yet another excuse to buy more glass because I can never have enough. So what are we doing involving the smart mineshaft today? Well I want to create the beginnings of the storage system that I hope will make the smart mineshaft smarter than the smartiest of smarty pants. You see, one of the slowest things with mining manually is having your inventory fill up with resources and once you have no room left, you have to make difficult choices as to what you want to keep or make the slow journey back to your chest set the surface or wherever you keep your storage to drop off your resources. I hope that what I do in this video will eliminate that problem. Ah, here we are! Honestly, the only thing smart about this thing currently is the control panels. The fact that I can just press a button and end up at the perfect layer for mining that specific resource is already amazing. But we can do better. We can make the redstone spaghetti monster that lurks within these walls even more spaghettifyingly horrendous than ever before. Oh, so that's where those skeleton horses ended up. I was wondering where they got to. So the solution to having to make the slow journey back to your storage system is actually to bring the input for the storage system straight to you and cutting out the journey in the first place. And we're going to do that by building a massive water elevator stretching from the meadow here all the way down to the bottom of the world. Ah, hello bedrock my old friend. Finally reached the bottom. I take it back, the bedrock is not my friend. It's way too expensive on the rockets to get out of here. Given that I am working on a redstone spaghetti monster project though, it would be a good idea to encase our water elevator with glass. I don't want to accidentally flood my redstone somewhere after all. And there we go, we now have a very nice glass tube. Now all that's left is to drop the water and kelpify all of the flowing water into water sources. I uh, didn't bring any kelp though. So let's just take a quick trip to the ocean. Here's some kelp. I only need one. Luckily I can just bone meal it from the bottom. Oh gosh, my perspective has warped. I know I'm travelling downwards, but this is so weird to look at. I feel like I'm on my own personal journey to the centre of the earth. Ah, oh, we've finally hit the bottom. Or is this the centre of the earth? Who knows. Anyway, this is a good place to place my soul sand. And kelp. And then I can just bone meal away. Oh, there goes my last air bubble. Oh no! I might drown! How on earth will Whistler escape this deadly situation? He is currently experiencing the pressure from over 180 blocks of water above him and he's run out of air. Oh, this may be an agonizing way to go. There's clearly no escape. Oh no, oh no. Today is the day that this hardcore world finally ends. It had to happen at some point. And who would have known that it would be by drowning? Oh, 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 I might lose half a haunch of hunger at some point soon. And I only have 61 golden carrots. No, there really is no way out. I'm doomed. Ah, finally. I was wondering when I might get slightly hungry. Okay, back to the surface we go. Okay, here's how you return to the surface from a glass tube in style. You assert dominance and T-pose your way out of it. Hallelujah! I can breathe fresh air again. 
That may well have been an excruciatingly long death if I had stayed down there. Just imagine if I had lost another half of a hunger haunch. That thought will haunt my dreams for a while. Now I want to use minecarts for my storage system as well. And that's what I mean by bringing the input to you, the player. I'm going to have minecarts with chests follow me to the branch mines that I'm currently in. And when my inventory fills up, I can leave the branch that I'm currently working in, put everything into a minecart, and send it on its way where it will end up at a double hopper collector. The hopper collector will then send everything to be dispensed into the water elevator, and the chest minecart will ideally return to where I was just mining, ready to take another load of resources. And I think we're going to have four drop-off stations for the minecarts on each layer of the mineshaft, one for each of the cardinal directions. Unfortunately, this may prove to be difficult in some places, as I'm not sure if there's redstone that needs moving out of the way or not. But I think we'll be mostly fine. Hopefully. Ah, I think I want to lower the trapdoors just there. I would prefer to have the minecart in full view than to just disappear from sight. Yeah, I think this looks better. And the double hopper collector works just fine as well. Now I just need to dig a tunnel for the hoppers all the way to our water elevator. There it is. Now to dispense the items into the elevator, we're going to use a dropper rather than a dispenser, just on the off chance that I put the wrong thing into the system and accidentally break something. I also want the dropper to fire as soon as an item enters its inventory, so we're going to make use out of a repeater just here, and that can further send a signal into this target block and activate the dropper. So hopefully everything will work just fine here. Oi! Enderman! You aren't allowed in here! Get out! So now that the hopper tunnel has been installed, we can give the first major test of the system. So if I put some sticks into here, I will hopefully see them ejected out of the water elevator at the top. I don't see them just yet. Just some junk from earlier. Aha! It works! Excellent! So I just need to build more minecart drop-off stations for every layer, hook them all up to the elevator, and we'll have a good site for a storage building at the top here. There is going to be a lot of hoppers involved in this project though, and that means a lot of potential lag. So to try and reduce that, we're going to place composters on top of every hopper as they count as containers and stop the hoppers from trying to check for physical items above them. This should hopefully make the smart mineshaft a lot more lag friendly than it could have been. And that, my friends, is a very smart move. Well, since that seemed to turn out as planned, I say we just go ahead and build those nice little minecart drop-off stations for the rest of the mineshaft. I'll be back with you when I'm done. Wait, what? Who on earth are you? Why are you down here? No, I'm so confused. Did you really somehow get aggro to me from the surface? And where are your friends? Oh, there they are. This is really weird, but you know what? I'm going to take advantage of you. So, what's a good pillager name? What goes with pillager? Phil? Phil the pillager? Philip? Right, if you could just embed yourself into the wall here, that would be great. Thank you. No, wait, I have the perfect name for you. You are now one incredibly filthy coal pillager. I mean, why else are you down here if not to pillage my coal? And we all know how grubby the coal mines are. And there we have it. We now have a minecart drop-off station for every layer of the smart mineshaft, going in every direction. Although one thing I didn't really account for when building this is lava. There's lava at diamond level. And I'm going to be building out of wood, so yeah. My smart mineshaft could very well burn down at some point, and when that happens, I will cry. But let's just demonstrate how this works again. I can grab my valuable mined resources, and then I can shove them into this minecart here, which will be following me into the branch mine. And that will then be dropped off at the drop-off station. Now we're actually quite deep here. I was wondering if I could beat the items back to the surface if I take a minecart up. That's the real challenge here. Oh, no, I lost this one. That's a shame. With some of the drop-off stations, I can totally beat the items to the surface. Just because the hopper chain that brings them over to the water elevator is so long. But as you saw just then, I can bring resources to the surface from where I am, from within the mineshaft itself. 
which is awesome. It's totally awesome. Now, some of the drop-off stations did provide their own challenge, like this one here. This is actually the water elevator just there. So I'm lucky I didn't need to go any further in that direction. I also often had to move a redstone wire or two for some of them downwards, just so that I had the space for everything. And that's kind of a nightmare for me to do at the moment, as all of the redstone is on very specific timings in order to get the minecart junctions pointing the right way. So I had to be very careful of how I moved the redstone around here, but I think I've managed to get away with it. That's not all. Just over here, we have the only drop-off station in the entire mineshaft where it's on the right-hand side rather than the left. And I know that's going to frustrate someone out there with OCD, but I'm sorry. It had to be this way. It's because I really didn't see a proper way to move this wire without screwing things up. It had to stay. That said, what on earth did I do with the redstone here? Why have I put a repeater like that there? It's already powered from there. It doesn't make any sense. Wait, no, don't question it. I can't touch anything in here or it'll break, and that wouldn't be very smart of me. And we have to live up to the name of the smart mineshaft. And another weird little situation popped up over here too. The water elevator was just ever so slightly out of place, and I had to work out how to make a double hopper collector here without breaking something. So what I've done is send the comparator signal through the block into the redstone torch here, which powers this redstone dust which can then in turn power the repeater that powers the minecart rail. So really, I only needed to add one redstone dust into the circuit, but I'm really lucky that I was able to keep doing redstone into our water elevator here. Oh, the system stole my oak log. Let's just grab one from here. Perfect. Just like you. Now I do have one small issue with what I've done here. I've spent the time to build all of the drop-off stations, but I haven't decorated anything. These parts of the mineshaft just look bland with only the log pillars. I need to decorate. And that's actually something that I've needed to do to the gold layer down here for a very long time now. I wasn't able to finish decorating this layer previously because I didn't have enough gold ore for the raw blocks. But I think I have enough now, just from the times that I've been underground since I started work on the mineshaft. So with all of this being the case, I think we should kickstart that time lapse into gear and get straight to building. The smart mineshaft must not only be smart, it must also be pretty. So let's go! Cut, cut, cut! Whoa! That was a short time lapse. Why'd you stop, Whistler? Well, I'll get to that in a moment. So this is our completed coal layer. Everything else to do with the coal layer from now merely involves expanding the mineshaft in each direction as I mine more of the resources here, which is fantastic. So just over here, we have the beginnings of our coal branch mine, where we can go to mine coal if we so wish to. And the same thing is the case going in each of the four cardinal directions. But there's a reason why I had to stop after only completing one layer. Guys, I'm almost at day 4000, and I haven't prepared anything to celebrate. I only have 10 days left before the big 4,000, and if I just kept building, I know that it would have just passed me by, and we can't have that. So I've put up a community poll asking what we should do to celebrate, and it seems like most of you wanted me to create a massive TNT bomb consisting of 4,000 TNT to celebrate reaching 4,000 days. So that's what we're gonna do. One issue though is I don't really have the TNT or the sand for that right now, so we've got to destroy a little bit more of this desert here. Oh hello, you're my husk pumpkin pal. You're a rare boy, aren't you? Anyway, 10 shulkers of sand should hopefully be enough to craft 4,000 TNT total. So let's get to digging, shall we? <laughs> and welcome back. We have totally filled our 10 shulker boxes with sand here which should be more than enough to give me 4,000 TNT, as I think I actually have some in my TNT shulker box in my ender chest as well. You see, it's times like this that I am really glad that I not only built a creeper farm, but that I also upgraded it a few episodes ago too, or I wouldn't have nearly enough gunpowder for today, or even for most of the projects that I've done in this world either. Imagine having to dig the nether hole without any TNT. That would have taken forever. 
It's not just an ordinary perimeter after all. That hole is 401 blocks in diameter. There we go. By my calculations, we have well over 4,000 TNT now, with plenty to spare as well. So I've just separated out exactly 4,000 TNT for the bomb. Now all we've got to do is find a good place to explode. But first, I think that I should probably repair my tools a little bit. They're actually taking a surprisingly large hit from the mineshaft project, you know. Hey there, nether chicken. Guess what? I'm gonna hit day 4000 soon. Isn't that amazing? Here, have a golden carrot, because you've been surviving for quite a while now too. I'm sure you've gone for about one and a half thousand days yourself, and that's pretty good for a chicken. Wait, you don't want the carrots? Oh, well I guess that's more for me then. I don't want to have a giant crater by my base though, so I think we're going to have to go somewhere far from here. But what is that? Are those bees? Oh no! Ah! Don't look. Life can have cruel lendings sometimes. You know what? I think in the land just here next to the coral reef is just begging for a giant hole. This is going to be the place to detonate. So let's just build ourselves a haste to beacon. And now I can dig a hole. Wait, another hole? Whistler, how many holes do you want to dig in your hardcore world? Come on. There's the nether hole, the smart mine shaft, most of the underground parts of my base. This is too much. Ooh, wandering trader. Do you have mangrove popagules for me? No? Oh, come now. You know the rules. Mangrove or death. There is no middle ground. So we have yet another hole in our world. Now time to fill it up with 4,000 TNT. Wow, this should be quite the epic explosion. You know, there's actually something a little bit scary about placing this much TNT. Like if a creeper drops from above, or a skeleton with a flame bow sees me and tries to shoot me, or if a thunderstorm starts and the TNT is struck by lightning, well, that's it. Game over. I'm in for a bad time. There's a lot that can go wrong, and I'm only placing a little bit of TNT. This wasn't supposed to be dangerous, but it totally is. Look, I'm sorry, it got to night time and I chickened out. That's just the way it is. Luckily, I still have a few more days before day 4000, so it's not like I'm in, in any rush or anything. Now what can I do to kill time? Oh, I know. I can go treasure hunting. Oh my goodness, phantoms can go underwater. I repeat, phantoms can go underwater. Ah, there we go. That's a map for me. And the chest should be just about here? Oh, I was slightly off. I was pretty close, though. Oh, guys. I don't know where this treasure chest could be. There's so much sand here. If only there was some small indicator that told me where the chest was. Ah! Surprise! The daytime has returned, so it's back to placing TNT I go. And there we go. I have placed exactly 4,000 TNT into this hole. And I'm in a state of perpetual nervousness until I stop standing directly on top of it. I still have three days left to go though, so... More treasure hunting? Yeah, more treasure hunting. Aha! More treasure for me. And that brings our heart of the sea total to seven. And we've got some conduits on top of that too. Pretty good, I'd say. Ah, here we go. The sunset of day 3999. The skies are clear, and the orange glow is beautiful. Uh, guys? Would it be funny to detonate the bomb with the creepers? No, stop Whistler! Don't be stupid now. Okay. Alright. Still though, that is a very bad place to spawn right now. <laughs> Here we go everyone. Dawn approaches for day 4000. So now all I have to do is wait for the day count to tick over and I can detonate the TNT bomb to celebrate the occasion. Oh, there it goes. Day 4000. It's time for the Big Bang. Oh, I missed. There we go. We got it that time. Oh. Oh. Oh, that was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. But well, I've got to say, my PC handled that one pretty well. Let's inspect the damage. Wow, that is a big hole. The TNT was only in one chunk. 
And look at the hole it created. A rip to that spawner, I guess. <laughs> this potential will never be known. Are there any remnants from the chest? No? Aw, oh, that really is a shame. Imagine if there was a god apple in there. Anyway, it's time to get back to my smart mineshaft time lapse that was so rudely interrupted by a milestone. We've got some decorating to do. Let's go. And welcome back everyone. We have made a lot of progress on the smart mineshaft in this episode, haven't we? The thing is actually functional as a mineshaft now. Honestly, the only thing left to do to make this feature complete is to build the storage building to store the resources. But that can wait until the next episode, I think. I have ideas to do more than that. But as far as the mineshaft itself goes, we're nearly done. Now there are some shenanigans going on here. You see, I wanted a mineshaft but there's actually a giant cavern over here. I have to bridge over mobs if I actually want to go mining in this particular spot. <laughs> I do really love how the gold has turned out in the walls though. It's created a kind of starry effect on the deep slate, and it's giving me some pretty major space vibes. I actually designed these walls slightly differently to the layers above as well. I decided not to try and use details for depth by adding slabs and stairs, so everything is a full block here. And you know what? I think I actually prefer it like this, for this gold layer at least for sure. But that's not all. The gold layer of the smart mineshaft was actually home to an amethyst geode, and I decided that I wanted to create an amethyst farm out of it. Not like the automatic ones back at my base, no. This one is a manual one, because I wanted somewhere I could go if I wanted to gather the various different crystals themselves. And given that I'm not always over here, I might be able to harvest them at their different sizes whenever I come here instead of only having the larger clusters. And then shortly after finishing, some glow squid spawned inside, and I thought that they would actually look pretty cool in here as a permanent feature. So I made sure to name tag a few to stop them from despawning. They are currently the chosen ones, but if you want to leave some name suggestions for me to give a squid a unique name, then please feel free. But yeah, the way to harvest the amethyst clusters is to simply swim up to the blocks and use a silk touch pickaxe to break the amethyst. It's definitely an easy farm to create, and I wanted to make it look like it was an amethyst farm as well, so I made sure to use purple, magenta and pink stained glass for the walls here. And we also have some custom geodes at the top and bottom as well. Now unfortunately, the design I have gone for would look a lot better if I didn't have a specific mod installed. You see, sodium, while it is pretty great at improving the performance of Minecraft, it actually fails pretty badly at rendering both water and glass. Like, I get that I should be grateful that the modders create and update these mods for free, and I will always be thankful for that. But this genuinely looks terrible, and this rendering bug has been an issue for such a long time now. I'm really surprised that it hasn't been fixed yet. Optifine doesn't do this. In fact, let me show you how this is supposed to look. Ah, you see that? The glass is smooth and there are no weird lines anywhere. This is the perfect way to render glass and water. It looks so good, but sodium just... Ugh. Honestly, if they fixed this one bug, then I would praise sodium to high heavens. But it's actually stopping me from doing certain projects because I know that it won't look good. 
so I can't. While I am a user of Sodium, I just can't fall in love with it just yet. Not while it has this rendering bug anyway. Now you might have noticed that I didn't decorate the diamond layer. Well this episode was just taking too long to produce, so I had to let it go from this episode. We'll try and do it in the next one though. I think I actually have a really good idea for it. But it's now that time of the episode where I get to work on the nether. And it's been begging me to go make some progress on it. <laughs> How have I done this? <laughs> I've never flown into the portal like this before. What on earth has happened? So we have quite a bit of TNT spare from earlier. And I say we use it to completely demolish this nether fortress. Yes, the fortress shall soon be gone. Let's start that time lapse. And welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. I have fully removed this entire nether fortress. And you know what? I am very thankful for that TNT. It cut down the time that I would have had to spend mining it quite substantially. I've actually only been working on removing it for a little over an hour. I have to admit though, that once again, I managed to blow up my blaze farm. Somehow the spawner is still intact, but the farm itself is uh... Well, it definitely has its issues. I should be able to fix it up again pretty easily though. So that means that the only spawnable places left to remove in the nether hole are within this last nether fortress over here. And this is indeed a chunky one. I think I'm going to need quite a bit of TNT for that one. And the frog light farm was within range for almost all of that time lapse just then too. Did we get many frog lights? No? Oh dear. This farm definitely isn't the fastest. But you know what? I'm still proud of it. It's my child after all. Hmm, now that I think about it, I wonder if I can improve it. I wonder if raising the magma cubes slightly will entice the frogs into eating the cubes a little bit more or something. Okay, I have had an idea. And it's pickles. So the hitbox for sea pickles is actually large enough that the small magma cubes don't take damage from the powder snow. But they're tall enough that they should bring the cubes a lot closer to the frogs themselves. Hopefully this will work. Oi, get out of my way. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we still have the odd magma cubes that refuse to get eaten. Ah, well, I'll think about it more later. I'm going to have to end the episode there, though. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thanks for watching.